Hi there. So in the last video, we performed the shuttle mission, which is uh, included in the Microsoft Space Simulator, where the shuttle was launched under automatic control, under autopilot control. We did a manual docking maneuver in orbit. Then the autopilot took over again and uh, did a deorbit burn and a re-entry procedure. And then control was uh, given back to us for the final approach and landing at the Kennedy Space Center. This is great, but uh, can we do an actual orbital insertion, launch an orbital insertion manually, um, and then after that do a, a deorbit burn and manual re-entry and landing? Um, this is by no means a uh, simple topic and generally these are done under computer control um, but um, I think it's worth a try so why don't we give it a shot so before we get there we have to set up the situation for a manual shuttle launch and the first thing we need to do is we need to switch our air spacecraft to the shuttle and here it is this is we have three types of shuttles we have the launch configuration which is shown here with the uh, uh, boosters and the main tank. We have the orbiter configuration where the uh, shuttle bay uh, doors are open and the um, docking port is uh, visible. And finally we have the lander configuration where the shuttle, the shuttle bay doors are actually closed. But for this uh, situation here now we're gonna use the um, launch configuration. So we click OK. And of course, we have to locate our shuttle on the surface of the Earth. And we're going to pick a launch location, which would be Launch Pad 39A, which is a launch pad for the shuttle. And there we are. So we have um, the cockpit view here, which is pointing straight up. And if we switch to the chase view, um, we can change it so that we have a bit of a better view of the shuttle. With uh, manual launches of the shuttle, um, you do not uh, have visualization of the uh, launch infrastructure, unfortunately. So it kind of looks odd with the shuttle standing by itself a few feet off the ground, but I think we can live with that. Um, the other thing we need to do is change our reference from the launch pad to the Earth, because that's going to be important um, for our calculations later on. All right. So that's basically the needed setup for the situation. So why don't we go to the whiteboard and talk a little bit about how we're going to do this. Okay, so what we're going to try to do today is we're going to go into orbit around the Earth um, and have a target altitude of 320 kilometers. So let's say this is the Earth. And we're going to need to get to a circular orbit of 320 kilometers. And we're going to do all this manually. I can tell you from now that this is not going to happen. Um, we are going to try to get into orbit and we'll uh, hopefully get there. But um, hitting uh, that target altitude smack on is going to be difficult. Another thing about uh, getting to orbit and staying in orbit is that for every set of altitude above the Earth, there is a uh, set of tangential speed, which is the speed you have to maintain, which is parallel to your movement vector or your plane of the orbit, um, in order to actually stay in orbit. Otherwise, you either fly off or you spiral down into the planet. And for 320 kilometers, we need a tangential speed of 7.726 kilometers per second. So that's pretty fast. How are we going to achieve that or try to achieve that? Well, um, if we had were to just take off straight up, we'll get to the orbit, but we will not have much of a tangential velocity because most of our, our thrust vector is straight up 
and so we'll get past go past the orbit and when we run out of fuel we probably will uh, come back in a very elongated uh, elliptical orbit or we may actually reach uh, escape velocity and never come back at all which would be a bad outcome regardless so instead of pitching straight up we we'll start going up at first and then once we hit the um, edge of space which is about 65 kilometers above the uh, surface of the earth we're going to start pitching down in order to increase gradually our tangential velocity so that by the time we reach our altitude we will be mostly going tangentially at a speed of 7.726 kilometers per second easier said than done but let's see if this can actually be done manually at all uh, normally uh, under uh, real circumstances this is all computer controlled and the astronauts do not control their uh, thrust vectors during the launch phase okay let's go back to the simulation okay now that we understand what we're gonna do in that first phase why we only the only thing we have to do is really just fire up the engines and see how this goes so here we go Off the shuttle goes. So notice that our velocities are displayed as ground and vertical and um, that's only until we hit the edge of space. Then once we are in space they will switch to tangential velocity and radial velocity. Our target altitude, as we discussed before, is 320 kilometers, and our radial, uh, our uh, tangential speed is going to need to be in the environment of 7.726 kilometers per second. So right now we're still in the atmosphere, so we'll wait for um, the velocity uh, uh, description to change and then we'll start our um, pitching. Currently we're pitched straight up at a plus 90 degree pitch angle. There we are. We are now in space. I'm going to switch our view a little bit here. There. And we're going to pitch down. Start gaining some tangential velocity. Notice that our radial velocity is already 1.5 kilometers per second and rising, so we need to pitch down further until it starts declining. Because we don't want to get too much faster than that otherwise we'll overshoot our target altitude okay let me switch the view angle a little bit here there that's better okay so our tangential velocity is rapidly increasing we're still under a kilometer per second our radial velocity away which means we're still climbing is decreasing but still quite fast and our altitude right now is about 145 kilometers and climbing. We've jettisoned already our smaller fuel uh, boosters and now we're on the fuel contained in the main tank here. We still have plenty of fuel but it'll be barely enough to achieve orbit. Um, so let's see how we do.
So we have to keep a really close eye on both the tangential velocity and the radial velocity. We want this to be slowing down, we want this to be increasing and make sure we're uh, adjusting as we get closer to our target altitude. So notice here our pitch is 82 degrees which means we're in space we're almost parallel to the surface not quite um, a pitch of zero means we're pointing straight down at the planet all right so our radial uh, velocity is coming down nicely we're still climbing of course and uh, our radio our tangential velocity is doing well also. If we don't do this right, there is a very good possibility we may run out of fuel and uh, may not achieve orbit, which would be bad. We're getting there. Keep an eye on that radial and tangential velocity and altitude. We probably want to pitch down a bit further because we are... So now we're almost parallel with the surface. We're at 88 degrees of pitch. And the reason I did this is I want to increase my tangential velocity um, while trying to reduce further my radial velocity. You want to try to hit the orbit with a radial velocity as close to zero as possible, which is extremely hard to do and I probably won't get there. Um, as well as have your altitude at 320 or close to it and a tangential velocity of 7.726 kilometers per second. A lot of things to juggle manually, hence why they use computers in real life. But like I said, we are getting there, and um, we're in good shape, actually, overall. So as soon as my tangential velocity um, is uh, where I need it to be, we'll cut off the engine. We're still climbing here. We pitch up a little, well, actually, no, let's leave it alone. Oh, we exceeded a little bit. Went a little bit faster than I... See, I got distracted by the other numbers. These things uh, go fast quickly. So we are at uh, 309 kilometers of altitude and a tangential velocity of 7.9 kilometers per second, um, which actually is probably okay. Um, the faster your tangential velocity, the lower your orbit. So since we are below uh, the target, we may be okay. So I think we're probably in a decent place right now. Um, it's nay impossible to actually achieve in the exact numbers that we were targeting manually anyway. So let's take a quick look and uh, an eyeball view basically of um, what our orbit looks like so far. And then we'll try to characterize it a bit more scientifically. So let's go to the second map view here. We're going to go to window and view controls and switch our map origin to the Earth. And the reason for that is we want to be able to have the Earth in the center of the map. Here we are. And uh, click OK. There we are. So let's zoom in. Let's switch to the side uh, front view. Front view is good. And let's zoom in. There's the Earth. And there's our space shuttle here. And you can see here um, where we are. So we're gonna go ahead and accelerate time a little bit. You don't wanna do it too much because then you lose a lot of precision, but we can go to say 1.1 minutes per second and we can see roughly what our 
shuttle is doing. This is a front view of uh, of the shuttle of the shuttle's orbit. So uh, yeah, we are definitely in an eccentric orbit here. And our apoapsis, which is the farthest point of the orbit, is close to 1,420 kilometers. So definitely not a circular orbit. Um, and hopefully we won't crash back down into the Earth. We'll see what our periapsis is, which is uh, the, the uh, lowest point on the orbit and we'll see what what our altitude is and we'll talk about that in just a second um, once I make sure that I'm actually going to survive <laughs> this launch here um, so we'll wait for the shuttle to make uh, a roundabout as you can see our altitude is declining quite rapidly here so I have a feeling uh, we're gonna be close to 200 kilometers yeah close to that yep so we're actually still way above the uh, upper atmosphere which is about 65 kilometers of altitude so there we are we have a, an eccentric orbit not horrible um, it's actually an ellipse not quite a circular orbit but for a manual launch I would say this is pretty darn good okay so I'm gonna switch to the side view and we're going to see, I'm going to explain what I'm going to be doing in a second when we go move to the whiteboard, but I'm going to get our shuttle close to the equator, which is here on the side view. Um, and once we get there, I'm going to slow down time to the point where it's actually hardly moving at all, because we're going to need some numbers once we hit the equator. There we are. So I'm going to slow down to 0.0. .0 zero one seconds per second time so essentially we're paused okay and for good measure we'll go ahead and um, pause the situation until we come back to it in a minute okay so let's talk about orbits a little bit here so, if we have the Earth here, and we have our spacecraft describing an elliptical orbit, it's a bit exaggerated, but here it is, we need to understand two terms which are very important in any orbit, and that is the point where the spacecraft is the closest to the Earth or any planetary body, and that's called the perigee for the Earth or periapsis if it's not the Earth. And at the point which is furthest away from the Earth, it's called the apogee or apoapsis for another planetary body. Another thing that's important to understand is that the velocity of the spacecraft, the tangential velocity, which is essentially uh, tangential to the uh, plane of the orbit, um, is zero at both of these points, v equal to zero. Okay, so. How do we determine where we are, whether we are at apogee or perigee? Simply we look at the altitude readout. Uh, once v is equal to the tangential velocity equal to zero and the altitude is at the lowest point, then we know we are at perigee. Uh, if v equal to zero and the altitude is at the highest point or maximum, then we are at apogee. Um, there is a scientific way of calculating um, whether we are actually um, in a, either an ellipse or a circular orbit or uh, whether we are no longer bound uh, by the uh, uh, gravity of the Earth once we uh, pass around. 
and that's called the uh, specific mechanical energy E okay and E is calculated with the formula V square over 2 minus mu over R V is our velocity either at tangential velocity either at apogee or perigee and R is our distance from the spacecraft to the center of the earth not the altitude but the distance from the um, spacecraft to the center of the earth mu is called the gravitational parameter and varies from planet to planet but for the earth um, it is basically um, 3.986 times 10 to the power 5 um, which essentially is equal to 398600. That's only for the Earth. It's a different number for each planetary body. So we plug these numbers in, and then we should be able to get E. And when we come back to the simulation, I'll show you how to figure out V and R uh, from the simulation. So what does E mean? Well, if E is less than 0, that means we have either an ellipse, or a circle. If E equal to 1, then we have a parabolic orbit, parabola. And if E is greater than 1, then we have a hyperbola. A parabolic orbit or hyperbolic orbit basically have a shape something like that. And what that means is that we go around the Earth at perigee or apogee for another body, but we do not come back. It's a one-way return to nowhere. Um, we just continue off. We may come under the influence of another planetary body and orbit the Sun, for example, or something like that, but we will not come back to the, the, the planet we started from and obviously this is not something we want pretty lonely out there so we want really to try to be either an ellipse or a circle so how do we determine once we know we are in a cir in an, uh, in a form of orbit so we are bound to the earth whether ellipse or circle how do we determine whether it's actually a circle or an ellipse and how elongated the ellipse will be and this is where uh, the eccentricity comes in, it's called E, and uh, the formula for this is rather, or looks rather complicated, and that's basically the square root of 1 plus 2EH square over mu square. Um, we know what E is because we calculated that, we know what mu is. H is essentially called the angular momentum. Okay. And all I'm going to say about it is that H is equal to VR, which we found out, or we will find out shortly. So once we have that, okay, we can calculate E. And if E is greater than 0, but less than 1, then we have an ellipse. And the closer to, we are to 1, the more elongated the ellipse is. The closer we are to 0, the more circular the ellipse is. If E equal to 0, then we have a circular orbit, circle. If E equal to 1, then we have a parabola. And if E is greater than 1, then we have a hyperbola. Again, not something we want. Okay, so this looks complicated, but it's really just a question of plugging numbers into formulas, and we'll be able to characterize uh, the most important elements uh, of our orbit so that we can answer the question, are we in orbit or are we not? And if we are, are we in a circular orbit or are we in an elliptical orbit? Um, and uh, that's really important 
uh, from an existential standpoint for an astronaut. So why don't we move back to the simulation and see how we can figure out what V and R uh, are. V and R are. That looks, sounded weird. So where, where V and the radius is. Okay, so going back to the simulation, we'll go ahead and uh, unpause it. And we're going to accelerate time a little bit. What we're looking for here is we're going to look, look for a uh, either apogee or perigee, as we talked previously. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to keep a close eye on our radial velocity, which should be zero either at apogee or perigee and at our altitude um, and um, well not our altitude we're actually going to switch to our distance would give us our distance from the center of the earth and this is the number we want this is the r value that we need to obtain in order to plug in into our equation so um, i'm going to grab a uh, piece of big paper and get ready to jot these numbers down once we reach either apogee or g okay so we're ready why don't we accelerate time again you have to be careful with that not too much 1.1 is fine and uh, here we can see our radial velocity increasing still and it will get to a point where it will reverse and start decreasing and when it hits zero and this is towards this is probably going to be our lowest uh, uh, point, which is perigee. So we're still going up. We're starting to slow down here. There we are, it's starting to come down. Let's use time a little bit further here to make things go quick. Oops, shoot. <laughs> we missed it. Okay, we'll go for the apogee then. Okay, it's coming down again. So let me just point something out here quick. Um, we're pointing away. It says away in the radial velocity, which means that we are going uh, away from the uh, from the Earth. Um, and so this tells us that we're heading towards the farthest point from the Earth, which is um, apogee. Okay, and it's declining, so we're getting close to that. So let's increase time again. further there oh darn it we missed the camera <laughs> okay well, let's go one more time let's try for perigee then all right I think it's time this time dilatation doesn't work for me so we're going towards the planet now this is our radial velocity toward you're on the dark side by the way if you notice here and our altitude our r value is declining so let's see, we should be getting there fairly close here. All right, there it is coming down now. So let's still make sure we're not going too fast time. Oops, we don't need that. It's coming down pretty quickly here, so let's be patient. All right. So once we hit zero close to it, we'll slow down a lot on time. Okay. All right, so we're very close here. That's good. So let's note our tangential velocity, uh, which is 8.144 kilometers per second. And our R value, which is our distance from the spacecraft, from the shuttle to the center of the Earth, which is 6,551 kilometers. Okay, so these are the two important values that we're going to need to plug in into our equations in order to obtain um, our um, values of the um, eccentricity as well as the um, specific mechanical energy. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, pause the simulation again and go back to our whiteboard and show you how uh, what the values are going to be like.
All right, so in order to do the calculations, I mean, we could do them by hand, which is laborious, or we can use a bit of technology. Granted, it's a retro technology, but it's still much more helpful than uh, manual calculation. And here I'm using um, the Swiss Micros 41LDM um, calculator, which is a replica of the venerable Hewlett Packard uh, 41CX programmable calculator. Uh, which has been long out of production. Um, this uh, calculator here, this replica, does not uh, replicate the exact form factor. Uh, however, its functionality is exactly the same and uh, it emulates a 41CX HP calculator which, with all options included. Um, and if you're interested in obtaining one, I'll leave the uh, link to Swiss Micros um, in the description. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on the screen here. There we are. A little bit out, okay. So let's turn on the calculator. And let's execute the program. It's called Orbit E. Okay, so first thing it's going to do, it's doing is actually asking me for mu, and we already uh, discussed uh, that the value for mu for the Earth was three nine eight six zero zero. Okay, then it's going to ask for the speed, for the velocity, the tangential velocity at perigee or apogee, and we just figured out that it was 8.144 kilometers per second 0.144 okay. and R at uh, perigee or apogee and we figured out it was 6,551 kilometers and there we are E is minus 27 Point seven, which tells us that this is a uh, either an ellipse or a circular orbit. Definitely not a parabolic or hyperbolic orbit. Remember, E has to be either one or greater than one for the orbit to be hyperbolic or parabolic. And so, in a sense, we are safe. We know we are still bound by the Earth as far as our orbit is concerned. So we can all. Uh, exhale a sigh of, sigh of relief here. Yay. All right, so the next thing uh, the program is going to calculate is basically our eccentricity to tell us how elongated our elliptical or circular or our elliptical orbit is um, and or whether it's a circle. Again, I know it's not a circle, but here we go. And E is 0 0.09, which is actually pretty good. Um, considering so it's a fairly close to a circular orbit not a circle but definitely uh, not a very elongated ellipse either and if you remember as we discussed again if E is equal to zero it's a circle if E is greater than zero but, but less than one then it's an ellipse and um, if E is closer to one then it's a very elongated ellipse and if it's closer to zero it's closer to a circle so we have a um, mildly elongated ellipse here um, and um, that's a pretty good achievement overall um, considering that we've done all this uh, manually all right so why don't we go back to the simulation okay so we are back with the simulation one thing I wanted to mention uh, before we go on is that um, you will notice that the main tank is still attached to the uh, shuttle. Uh, under normal circumstances in orbit, this would have detached uh, prior to orbital insertion. And the reason for that is we did not use all of the fuel in the tank, so it's still attached. So one way to remedy this is simply just switch over to the orbiter configuration here 
um, and that will essentially change the graphics. It will not change any of our orbital parameters though, which is good. So here we go, and there. That's a bit uh, nicer looking or more and more realistic. So um, if we look at the map view here, which is the side view of the Earth, um, and we accelerate time a little bit, we will notice that um, the shuttle is actually orbiting in a polar inclination or 90 degrees. An equatorial orbit is zero degrees this way, and this is going from north, from south to north, uh, round the Earth. So this is a polar 90 degree or close to 90 degree orbit. Um, and um, it's uh, uh, it's one of the uh, complications of launching uh, anything into space. Um, it's to figure out how to launch it in order to achieve a certain inclination. And there are limitations depending on your specific uh, latitude. But in any case, um, in the next video, I would go over the procedure uh, about how to figure out the exact inclination angle of your orbit, as well as how to actually um, change that inclination angle. Uh, to any angle you desire within fuel limitations, of course. Um, so that's basically it. Why don't we close that map view um, and let's just enjoy our hard work here at orbiting and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.